Picture finding tech so advanced, it breaks the laws of physics. Now imagine your own government has been studying it for decades. I'm not talking science fiction here. The Pentagon's former UFO chief just confirmed they have materials that aren't made by humans. And that's just the start of what they've been hiding. Hold on to your lab coats, science fans, because reality is about to get weird. Hey there, my curious cosmic companions, Theodore here, and today we're diving deep into the government's classified UFO program. We've got the inside scoop from Luis Elizondo, no tinfoil hats needed. This guy ran the Pentagon's official investigation unit. He's dropping bombshells about recovered materials that defy explanation and some seriously spooky experiences that followed his team home. Time to put your paradigms on notice because they're about to get shifted. Okay, so picture this. You're ancient Egyptian, right? Chisel in hand, you're about to break into King Tut's tomb. But instead of gold and jewels, bam, there's a 747 just sitting there. It's like, what? A total temporal disconnect. That's a pretty good analogy for what some people are saying about these UAP sightings, yeah. And that feeling of, wait, what? That's exactly where we're heading today. We're doing a deep dive into the world of Luis Elizondo, the guy who ran the Pentagon's Hush Hush UFO program. Super fascinating story, too, because Elizondo's not your typical, you know, UFO guy. The guy's got a background in microbiology, military intelligence, counterterrorism. Yeah. He's all about data and facts. And his new book, Imminent, it's got everyone talking. For sure. For sure. And we've gone deep, right? Got Imminent itself, tons of interviews he's done, articles, the usual Wikipedia rabbit hole. Oh, and even dug up some archived government records. Yeah, we're going all in on this one. Buckle up, listeners. Yeah. Our mission today is to figure out not just what Elizondo is saying, but the why. Like, why all the secrecy? What's the government's angle? And the big one, what does this mean for how we understand, well, everything? Right. It's like existential stuff. So first up, who eyes Luis Elizondo? Doesn't exactly screen UFO chaser, does he? Nope, not at all. In fact, his background is almost like he was made for this. He's got the scientist's skepticism, but also knows how intelligence agencies work, how they control info. And the family history is wild. His dad was a Cuban exile, big time involved in the Bay of Pigs invasion. Talk about a life steeped in secrets and high stakes. Absolutely shapes your worldview, right? Knowing how power works, what lengths governments go to to manage information. So Elizondo lands at the Pentagon, what, 2008? But he's not there for the little green men. Mm -hmm. He's trying to improve how national intelligence and local law enforcement share what they're seeing. Totally different world, at least on the surface. But then things take a turn. Yeah, he gets tapped for this super classified program. Even he doesn't really know what he's getting into at first. OK, intrigue level just went way up. So Spill, what's the program all about? Officially, it's called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program 8-TIP ran from 2007 to 2012, though Elizondo hints stuff like this is still going on, just under different names. So like the government's official UFO hunting department? Pretty much. Their job was to analyze UAP reports, especially from military folks, and see if there's any danger. And all this happening under a veil of secrecy that would make a spy novel blush. Right. Elizondo says some of it was that Cold War thinking, fear that someone else had tech we couldn't even fathom. Yeah, makes sense. But you also get the sense, reading between the lines, that they were kind of scared of what they might actually find. Like, what if Are We Alone mm -hmm. turned out to have a way more complex and closer to home answer than anyone expected. Exactly. And that's what makes Elizondo's story so different. He wasn't out there chasing blurry lights. He had a method to this. Oh. He and his team zeroed in on five very specific things about UAPs, things that couldn't be easily explained away. He calls them the five observables. Which is where we start edging into sci-fi territory. But mm. this is coming from highly trained military people mm -hmm. backed by radar data, sensor readings, the whole nine yards, not just some guy with a shaky camcorder, you know. Totally. And the first observable hypersonic velocity, we're not talking a little faster than our stuff. We're talking speeds way beyond what we can make, even in yeah. thick atmosphere. OK, so like how fast are we talking here? So the SR-71 Blackbird, that's a fast plane, right? 3,200 mile per hour. Some of these UAPs are clocked at 13,000 mile per hour. Whoa, hold on. 
That's a lot faster. Yeah, about 17 times faster than the speed of sound, to put it in perspective. It's like teleporting across a football field, snap just like that. <laughs> and that's just the first weird thing. Oh, we're just getting started. Number two, instantaneous acceleration. Imagine pulling thousands of Gs. Any pilot would be instantly crushed. Any aircraft obliterated. No, no kidding. It's like these things just laugh at inertia, making right angle turns at those insane speeds. Okay, so speed and maneuverability are off the charts. What else is on the list? Low observability. They can be incredibly hard to see, both with the naked eye and on radar. Think stealth tech, but cranked up to 11. So they're super fast, crazy agile, and can basically disappear whenever they want. This is sounding less and less like a misidentified weather balloon every minute. What else you got? Number four is where it gets really wild transmedium travel. We're talking seamless transitions between air, water, maybe even space. Wait, what? Like, no special equipment, no yeah. design change? Nope. They just... Go. No clunky seaplanes or space shuttles needed. Okay, now we're talking about define the laws of physics as we know them. And I've got a feeling number five is where things get really strange. You're not wrong. Mm. We're talking anti-gravity effects. The way these UAPs move suggests they can control gravity itself, or maybe even space-time. Okay, hold up. No wings, no visible engines. It's like they're playing by a whole different set of rules. Exactly. And that's just scratching the surface of what Elizondo and his team were dealing with. So we've got these five mind-blowing observables. But is this all based on blurry photos and shaky video? Or is there real evidence to back this up? Well, remember those videos that came out a few years back? The gimbal, go-fast, FLIR footage? Oh yeah, those are everywhere. Elizondo says those are just the teaser trailer. He claims the government has way more compelling footage, high-definition stuff that would blow your mind. High-def from military-grade sensors. Man, I'm trying to even imagine what that must look like. Well, even without that footage, we're talking about multiple credible eyewitnesses here. Right, right. F-18 pilots, radar operators, weapon systems officers. These are highly trained professionals, not exactly the type to go making up stories about little green men. They're all backing each other up, too. Exactly. And then you've got those two big incidents, the USS Nimitz and USS Theodore Roosevelt encounters. Those weren't just quick glimpses. These were extended encounters with multiple people watching these UAPs do their thing. And they were displaying those five observables we talked about, right? Right. Those incidents were huge. They showed that UAPs weren't just some fringe phenomenon. They were being seen by our military in real-world situations. This is getting intense. And get this. Elizondo himself says he experienced what he calls high strangeness while he was at ATIP. Wait, high strangeness? What does that even mean? And he wasn't the only one. Okay, now I need to know more. Mm -hmm. Did he see a UFO get abducted, spill the beans? Well, he's a little vague on the specifics, but he does describe these luminous green balls of light that seem to move with intelligence. They even pass through walls, apparently. Okay, that's definitely not your average fireflies. And other people saw this, too. Family members, neighbors, colleagues, even some people working on the UAP program reported similar things. Okay, so not only are there objects in the sky breaking the laws of physics, but there's also weird stuff happening on the ground that might be connected. Yeah, it adds a whole other layer of mystery, for sure. And it makes you wonder what the government really knows about all of this. Because Elizondo is definitely implying there's more to the story. Like, he could only reveal so much because of his security clearance and all that. He's definitely playing his cards close to his chest. But I'm getting the feeling this is just act one of the Elizondo saga. There's something bigger going on here. This isn't just about chasing lights in the sky, is it? You're picking up what we're putting down. Elizondo's not just sharing cool stories. He's raising some really profound questions about our place in the universe, the nature of reality itself, and what our government might be keeping from us. Okay, I'm hooked. Let's keep digging. So it's like, okay, if Elizondo's so worried about government secrecy and he really thinks we have a right to know, why not just tell us everything? Right. Spill the beans already. He's not working for them anymore. What's stopping him? Well, he says he's still bound by all those non-disclosure agreements, you know, the super serious kind. Revealing classified stuff could land him in a whole heap of legal trouble. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so he's got to walk this tightrope, tell us what he can without ending up in court. Exactly. And that's part of what makes his book Imminent so fascinating. You're constantly reading between the lines, trying to figure out what he's hinting at, but can't say outright. It's like a giant puzzle, right, where you only have half the pieces. Totally. But even with those limitations, he drops some pretty huge bombshells. Oh, yeah. Like that whole thing about the government having materials that are not made by humans. Mm -hmm. 
you don't just casually mention that in your memoir unless you're trying to make a point. Exactly. That alone suggests they've recovered something physical, evidence related to UAPs. It's like he's showing us this crazy piece of the puzzle, but we can't see the whole picture. Okay, now I need to know more. What are these materials? Where do they come from? Are we talking pieces of a crashed UFO? He's super vague about specifics, says he's not allowed to say. Of course. But he definitely wants us thinking about it, considering the possibilities. It's like he's saying, look, the evidence is out there. The government's got it. But it's up to you to demand answers, to push for more transparency. He's definitely got us hooks. And it's not just the physical evidence that's raising eyebrows. Elizondo says he had some pretty wild experiences while working with ATIP. Right, those high strangeness experiences, as he calls them, suggest they were somehow connected to his work on the UAP program. So it wasn't just analyzing reports from a distance. He was experiencing something firsthand. It seems that way, yeah. And it wasn't just him, remember. He mentions family, neighbors, even colleagues having similar experiences. So it's like... This weirdness was spilling over into the lives of people connected to the program. And some of these people were experiencing this while working on the UAP program. So we're not talking about some random event years later. This was happening concurrently with their investigations. Okay, hold on. This is getting spooky. But what are we talking about here? Did he see a UFO? Get abducted. Give me some details. He's pretty vague, unfortunately. But he does mention these luminous green balls of light that seem to move with intelligence, even passing through walls. Okay, that's definitely weird. But is it possible there's a more normal explanation? Some kind of natural phenomenon? People misinterpret things all the time, right? He acknowledges that, yeah. He mentions things like ball lightning, St. Elmo's fire. Right, right. But he also says the timing of these events, coinciding with his work at 8-Tip, felt like more than just a coincidence. So he's not ruling anything out. Basically, he's leaving it open to interpretation. Maybe there's a scientific explanation we haven't figured out yet, or maybe it's something truly unexplainable. I kind of like the mystery of it all, to be honest. Keeps things interesting. And that's part of what makes this whole topic so captivating, right? It forces us to confront the limits of what we know, the possibility that there are things out there we may never fully understand. It's like Elizondo saying, hey, don't be so quick to dismiss the strange and the unknown. Keep an open mind. The world might be a lot weirder than you think. He's definitely challenging our assumptions. I'm into it. And it's not just about UFOs, you know? It's about how we approach knowledge in general. He's encouraging us to be skeptical, to question authority, to demand evidence. That's a good thing, right? No matter what you're looking into, question everything. Exactly. He's basically advocating for a more critical and informed public. Okay, I can get behind that. He thinks we have a right to know what's going on, and we shouldn't be afraid to ask tough questions, especially when it comes to national security. Which brings us to the big question. Is the government actually being transparent now? Or are they still hiding things? Because even with all this talk about disclosure lately, it still feels like they're only telling us enough to keep us interested, not enough to really answer the big questions. Yeah, it's like they're giving us just enough to whet our appetite, but not the whole meal. So what's the deal? What are they so afraid of? Okay, let's get real for a second. Imagine you've got a friend who's never seen a smartphone. You wouldn't just hand them an iPhone 15 and say, good luck. You'd ease them into it, right? That's kind of what's happening here. The government's dealing with tech so mind-bending, they're worried about giving us all collective brain freeze. Not saying it's right, but at least now we know why they've been so careful with the truth. Is it just embarrassment, or is there something more to it? What if these UAPs actually pose a threat? That's definitely a possibility that Elizondo brings up, yeah. He talks about the potential dangers of encountering advanced technology we don't understand, tech that could be way beyond anything we can currently imagine. Right, like, what are we going to do if something hostile shows up? And remember that incident he mentions where a UAP seemingly split a combat formation of fighter jets? That suggests they can outmaneuver our most advanced aircraft without even breaking a sweat. Yeah, that's not exactly comforting. And he hints at other incidents that are even more concerning, stuff he can't talk about publicly but clearly weighs heavily on him. So he's walking this line between wanting to tell everyone what he knows and knowing he could get in huge trouble for it. It's a tough position to be in. And it makes you realize this isn't just some fun thought experiment. There are real implications here, and we need to take them seriously. So where do we go from here? What are we supposed to do? Sit around and wait for the government to decide what we're ready to know. 
Mm. That doesn't really seem like Elizondo's style. Not at all. He's calling for more research, more funding, a more open dialogue about UAPs. He doesn't want us just waiting around. What's he saying we should do? He's saying we need to understand these objects, where they come from, what their intentions are, before it's too late. He's like sounding the alarm bells and handing everyone a megaphone at the same time. Exactly. And w what's interesting is how he delivers that message. It's not doom and gloom. It's almost hopeful. Yeah, I get that. Like, he's excited about the possibilities, even if they're a little scary. It's contagious, that passion. He's not just throwing facts and figures at you. He's telling a story, a story that challenges how we see the world, what we believe, and even our place in the cosmos. Okay, I'm definitely feeling that. It's like he's inviting us all to join him on this journey of discovery, to explore the unknown, question everything, and be open to the possibility that we're on the verge of something truly extraordinary. And here's where we get to the really big stuff, right? Elizondo says the government isn't just investigating UFOs, but that they have technology that is, and I'm quoting here, not of this world. Yep, that's the big reveal. And it's the one he's most careful about. So back to reading between the lines, trying to figure out what he's hinting at but can't say directly. Pretty much. He does mention something about exotic materials that have been recovered, right? Yeah. Could these be pieces of a crashed UFO? It could be, yeah. I mean, that's what everyone's thinking, right? It's definitely the first thing that comes to mind. And there are some people out there who believe the government's been reverse engineering this alien tech for decades, trying to unlock its secrets. Yeah, it sounds like something straight out of a movie, but... But the line between sci-fi and reality seems to be getting blurrier all the time. Tell me about it. Especially when you start digging into Elizondo's claims. Yeah. Like, he's saying we might be on the verge of a technological revolution unlike anything we've ever seen, all thanks to technology that didn't come from Earth. And that brings us back to that careful dance the government's doing with disclosure. They're admitting UAPs exist. They're even hinting at the possibility of recovered materials. But they're being very, very cautious about how much they reveal. Right. It's like they're trying to walk this line between informing the public and avoiding mass panic. Exactly. Because let's be real, if they came out and said, hey, guess what? We've got alien tech in a secret lab. People would freak out. Oh, for sure. It would yeah. be total chaos. So they're slowly releasing information, little by little, getting us used to the idea that we're not alone. It's like they're trying to prepare us for a future that might be very different from what we're used to. Which begs the question, are they doing a good job? Are they being honest? Are they holding back crucial information? And what's the real reason behind all this transparency? Is it genuine or is it just a PR stunt to keep things under control? Tough questions and ones we all need to be asking, because if Elizondo's right and the government is sitting on evidence of alien tech, well, the implications are mind blowing. It changes everything. It really does. It's like we're standing on the edge of a whole new era and we don't even know what's waiting for us on the other side. It's both exciting and terrifying, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a lot to take in. No kidding. But one thing's for sure, the world is a lot more interesting when you open yourself to the possibility that we're not alone. You got that right. <laughs> and speaking of interesting possibilities, remember how Elizondo suggested that these UAPs might be using technology that can manipulate space-time itself? Oh, yeah, that's a big one. That's where things get really wild. It takes us into a whole other realm of questions, you know? Questions about the nature of reality, the possibility of other dimensions, whether our current understanding of physics is even remotely accurate. Yeah, we're talking some serious head-scratching stuff. Think about it like this. Everything we know about physics is like a rule book for a board game. Now imagine someone shows up playing 3D chess while floating in midair. These U apps aren't just breaking the rules, they're playing an entirely different game. And somewhere in a government lab, there's a piece of that game board. Wild, right? Elizondo and his idea that these UAPs might not just be using super advanced tech, but tech that could actually mess with space time itself. Right, like that's not just a little what if that completely upends everything we thought we knew about, well, the universe. Imagine finding out the Earth is flat after all, but like on a cosmic scale. Exactly. It's like all our physics textbooks suddenly belong in the fiction aisle. Mm -hmm. So is he saying these things are time travelers then? Interdimensional beings? What's the takeaway here? Well, Elizondo doesn't get that specific. He's careful to avoid making any direct claims about who's piloting these things or where they might be coming from. Okay, but he's definitely got us thinking about it. 
for sure. He's more focused on getting us to accept that our current understanding of reality, of what's even possible, might be kind of limited. Fair enough. There's that saying, right? The universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it's stranger than we can imagine. Uh -huh. But even if we buy that, how does the government even begin to deal with something like this? It's not like they can just send out a memo saying, hey, FYI, physics is broken back to the drawing board. Right. It's a massive challenge. They've got this duty to protect national security, which might mean keeping some info under wraps, you know, to prevent panic or make sure someone doesn't try to exploit this stuff for, well, who knows what. But Elizondo's also arguing that people have a right to know what's up, especially if there are potential threats involved. He's not saying storm Area 51 and let everyone poke around. Mm -hmm but he definitely wants more transparency. And that's what's so interesting right now. The way the government's talking about UAPs is changing. Yeah, it's subtle, but definitely shifting. It's gone from straight up denial to like a grudging admission that something's going on. And in some cases, they're even encouraging more discussion and research. It's a tricky balancing act though, isn't it? Trying to control the narrative, but also admitting there's stuff out there they don't fully get, makes you wonder, is this real transparency or just some calculated PR move? Hard to say for sure, but regardless of why they're doing it, the fact that they're acknowledging UAPs at all is a huge deal. Yeah, a few years ago, they wouldn't even touch the subject. And Elizondo's book, Imminent, I think it's playing a big role in pushing this conversation forward. He's not just telling a good story, he's asking really tough questions, questions that demand answers. And those questions go way beyond just national security, right? Yeah. We're talking about our place in the universe, the nature of consciousness, the very fabric of reality big stuff. Elizondo's not just saying, hey, UFOs exist, deal with it. He's saying, what does it even mean to be human in a universe that might be way more complex and mysterious than we ever imagined? Exactly. That's what makes it so compelling. He's not just a whistleblower. He's almost like a philosopher, a visionary, someone who's seen things that have forced him to re-examine everything. Remember that feeling when you first learned the Earth wasn't the center of the universe? Or that we're made of stardust? Well, buckle up, buttercup because this is that kind of revelation. We're not just rewriting a few pages in our physics books. We're having to rethink the whole story of what it means to be human. And let me tell you, as someone who spent their life in science, this is both terrifying and absolutely thrilling. So after all this, after diving into Elizondo's background, the Pentagon secret program, the five observables, the hints about recovered materials, the possibility of tech that could rewrite physics, What's the takeaway? What should we be thinking about as we go about our lives, knowing all this is happening? I think it comes down to this. We are living in crazy times. The old ways of thinking, the old assumptions, they're falling apart. And a new way of understanding reality is starting to emerge. Elizondo is one of the people at the forefront, pushing us to open our minds, question everything, and really embrace the unknown. It's both exciting and a little scary, isn't it? It's like we're on the edge of this vast ocean of discovery, just starting to dip our toes in. Perfectly put. And like Elizondo says, the truth is out there, but it's up to us to keep looking for it. So listeners, keep looking up, keep asking questions, and never stop exploring the mysteries of the universe. Who knows what we might find? You've been listening to The Deep Dive. Until next time, stay curious. Well, my scientifically inclined friends, we've ventured deep into the realm of the unknown today. From government secrets to physics-defying tech, it's a lot to process. Trust me, my ADHD brain is still doing cartwheels. But here's the thing. Sometimes the biggest discoveries come when we admit we don't have all the answers. Keep questioning, keep exploring, and never stop looking up. Who knows? Maybe the next big revelation is just around the corner. This is Theodore, signing off until next time, when we'll dive into another slice of our wonderfully weird universe. <laughs> <laughs>